Hello guys, today our topic is CSF and ventricular disorders. So before going to disorders, I would like to ask you what is CSF? CSF is, is something which cushions the brain within the skull and serve as shock absorber for CNS. And it also circulates nutrients and chemical filtered from the blood and remove waste products from the brain. So this is the main function of CSF. Now where does CSF resides in the brain? It resides in ventricles and subarachnoid spaces. So as you can see this is brain so these the upper part these all are sinuses in which CSF flows and these the center part is ventricles where the CSF flows and produced. Now is produced CSF is produced by choroid plexus always remember this choroid plexus within the ventricles and mainly choroid plexus resides in roof of the third ventricle means if you will see this is the third ventricles here and in this the, the roof resides the choroid plexus and lateral floor of lateral ventricles so the upper part this is a lateral ventricles so the floor of lateral ventricles there are choroid plexus which form CSF. So now some important things to learn. Total CSF volume is 150 ml. So always remember that CS, total CSF volume is 150 ml and in a 24 hours 500 ml of CSF is made. Always remember this. And it is larger in men and than women and larger in older individual. That means men have more CSF and older individual have more CSF. Why? If you think why? Because older individual have cortical atrophy and due to cortical atrophy there is enlargement of ventricles. So there are more space for CSF. And now spinal CSF volume is 50 ml. That means in the central canal of spinal cord there is 50 ml of CSF at a given time. Normal CSF pressure, very important thing to notice, normal CSF pressure in recumbent position is 65 to 195. So this is the normal CSF pressure. Now we, are, we will uh, we will go to the physiology first. How does it flows? CSF flows. So CSF flows from lateral ventricles to the third ventricles and then to the fourth ventricles and then to center canal. This is a, suppose this is the brain and this is the spinal cord. So the brain contains lateral, then third, then fourth, and then center canal. Later, okay, and you can check for these. You can pause the video and check for what forebins are there supplying the CSF. Now, problems what are the problems in this ventricular systems? What can be the problems causing the disease? So, just remember these four problems always before going to each every of them. Just remember these four problems first is non communicating hydrocephalus. Second is communicating hydrocephalus. Third is normal pressure hydrocephalus. And fourth is pseudotumor cerebri. Just remember these four things, please. Now, four problems and only one solution, which is ventriculo peritoneal shunt. Four problems have one solution VP shunt. Just learn this thing first. Just remember, just memorize these four things. Then it will be easy for you to understand the diseases. So we will go to first non-commuting hydrocephalus. So aqueductal stenosis is most common cause. Aqueductal stenosis से क्या relation है हमारा कि जो हमारा aqueduct है, sir अगर हम जाएंगे इसमें देखेंगे, this is aqueduct, this is aqueduct. If you see there, this is aqueduct. अगर यहाँ पे narrowing हुई, if there is any narrowing between the aqueduct here, if there is narrowing, then the CSF flowing from lateral to third ventricles won't go into the fourth ventricles right isn't it so if there is any narrowing here then the csf cannot flow to the fourth ventricle so it is what it is what non communicating hydrocephalus okay because it cannot uh, ventricles cannot communicate between themselves that's why its name is non communicating so it, it is a most common cause aqueductal stenosis obstruction is above the fourth ventricles that means above here here this is fourth ventricle and this is above the four ventricles obstruction so now 
let's go what are the clinical features always remember headache and gait disorders memory urinary incontinence these four things okay and what you will do do an mri mri to check for stenosis in ventricles face contrast mri is a special procedure used in this method for determination if there is flow in aqueduct used to confirm aqueductal stenosis so always remember face contrast mri now next next is treatment treatment is ventricular drainage by use of shunt and valves i already told you all four problems require only one solution which is vp shunting ventricular peritoneal shunt and remember the complication of this which are shunt infection of course there can be an infection if you are putting something outside some something from outside right any shunt and all that over drainage maybe the your shunt is over draining so the so there will be less csf in the brain and then it will exaggerate the headache subdural hematoma and sub, uh, subdural hygroma is also uh, common complication of vp shunting now i have uh, made a question myself to give you a hint how does how can be the question coming for this uh, disease so 28 uh, year old male patient with past history of brain tumor and meningitis came to gp with chief complaint of headache as we have read headache difficulty in walking which means gait attack gait disorder and memory problems and urinary incontinence and tremors so mri shows always remember this thing that because the obstruction is before the before the fourth ventricles right in aqueduct so there will be lateral and third ventricle enlargement but fourth ventricle will be normal normal fourth ventricles okay and phase contrast mri is come abnormal and, and we already know that if phase contrast mri is abnormal then there is obstruction in aqueduct so this is the diagram i have taken it from the internet and you can see the fourth and the third ventricles are oh sorry for lateral and the third ventricles are enlarged while the fourth ventricle is normal so this is a case this is a typical case of non communicating hydrocephalus so i you can pause the video and check it again now you are coming now we came to communicating hydrocephalus so what is communicating hydrocephalus that was non the the previous disease was non communicating because there is no connection between ventricles but here you have proper connection between the ventricles the problem is the drainage or blockage of absorption because you know if uh, csf flows but as it flows it is it is produced as well as it is also reabsorbed inside the brain so that there is proper uh, equilibrium between absorption and production so if ventricles so in this communicating hydrocephalus all ventricles are enlarged not only lateral and third ventricles like the communicating in this all the ventricles are enlarged always remember this and there cause what are the causes blockage of absorption now what can cause blockage of absorption kon kar sakta hai blockage absorption ka to subarachnoid uh, दो जगह हो सकता है सब एरेक्नाइड स्पेस पे और एरेक्नाइड विलाई पे जैसे वेंट्रिकल्स जब वेंट्रिकल्स से निकलता है ये सी एस एफ तो ये जाता है सब एरेक्नाइड स्पेस पे ठीक है अब अगर सब एरेक्नाइड स्पेस पे ब्लॉक है तो कैसे एब्जॉर्व होगा सी एस एफ ऊपर जाके सब ड्यूरल साइनस में तो एक तो ये हो गया और सेकेंड सेकेंड इज अरेक्नाइड विलाय सो अरेक्नाइड विलाय इज द वन विच एब्जॉर्व द सी एस एफ एंड इफ it is damaged then how can you absorb the csf and then the csf amount will increase and it will dilate the ventricles simply icp is usually increase except in case of nph and this in this intracranial pressure will increase of course because csf is increased so icp icp will also increased and okay now next clinical features are similar to that non communicating but it has some additional features the headache was common in this and that one also non communicating in and it is usually lethargy obtundation uh, and coma can occur in this frontal lobe dysfunction is common remember this frontal lobe dysfunction occurs in communicating hydrocephalus remember this melton slowness cognitive impairment and abulia all ventricles include the four ventricles are enlarged always remember this thing all ventricles are enlarged so if the question came in which mri shows all ventricles are enlarged then most likely it is communicating hydrocephalus 
treatment is same all four problems have one solution which is repetient. Now we are going uh, this is a question I have made uh, to for you to easily understand how can the question comes patient with neurosarcoidosis because this is uh, associated uh, this uh, communicating hydrocephalus is mainly main, uh, most of the time associated with uh, some autoimmune disease like neurosarcoidosis okay came to neurologist with chief complaint of headache lethargy mental slowness abulia suffling gait all and also suffling gait is common in this like so we have to rule out parkinsons and sphincter disturbance and mri shows all ventricles are enlarged so it's directly showing you that it has some problem uh, related to communicating hydrocephalus and lp shows increase icp so this is how the question can came and this is a diagram if this is a diagram is come you you should directly focus on communicating hydrocephalus because you will see all the ventricles are enlarged all of them all of them be careful about this treating these patients now nph nph means normal pressure hydrocephalus that means the hydrocephalus is present but there the icp is not increased the intracranial wow it's like a wonderful thing to think about it like you have done lp but you will see there is no icp and then yet there is increase in uh, i mean there is hydrocephalus so so always uh, this is a type of a special type of communicating hydrocephalus but it has normal icp icp while in the communi other communicating hydrocephalus we have read that icp is always increase here so it's like uh, nph is a special type so all we only uh, diagnose this by a triad which is always remember this triad this is very important gait disorder urinary incontinence and cognitive impairment always remember this headache nausea and vomiting are rare as compared to our communicating hydrocephalus in which headache was present okay so and cause same as communicating hydrocephalus the causes are same so nph causes head trauma previous head trauma any surgery and in subarachnoid hemorrhage and meningitis are the main causes remember these also now pseudotumor cerebri idiopathic or intracranial hypertension this is a one type of uh, uh, disease which is also very important so it is benign there, there is increase in icp in the absence of tumor masses or hydrocephalus now this is also very special because there is no hydrocephalus no mass no tumor and that and yet you have increased icp now you will think how how the patient is having increased icp because there is no tumor there is no mass there is no hydrocephalus so uh, it's it's a type of benign intracranial hypertension so this is more common in women always remember this women ratio is 4 raised to 1 to male and 8 raised to 1 to male and obesity is highly linked to this pregnancy hypothyroidism and some drugs some drugs like corticosteroids minocycline cyclosporine vitamin a growth hormone lithium carbonate these all are you have to just remember these things because these are very important things now diagnosis criteria what is the diagnostic criteria headache is common normal brain imaging you won't see any mass any tumor any hydrocephalus so it will point out the mri will be normal icp is more than 250 mm per water or higher or lumbar puncture on number puncture normal csf finding uh, remember these low protein levels are found in this normal alertness the patient is normal alert no identifiable cause of increase icp that's why we call it idiopathic or benign and symptoms are headache now this is the most important if you want to know what's the question the question will be like patient is having headache throbbing headache and generalized and worse in the morning patient and patient whenever patient flex the neck there is pain on shoulders and neck and there is patient hear something like pulsatile tinnitus visual obscursions all patient have a papal edema remember this so uh, fundoscopy will show papal edema and sixth nerve palsy also occurs because of traction and remember this point transient visual obscuration that means visual blindness is a key symptom suggested of idiopathic intracranial hypertension in patient with headaches so patient with headaches and blindness we will suggest it to pseudotumor cerebri now ct normal hoti hai mri normal hoti hai 
वेंट्रिकल्स बिकॉज कुछ है ही नहीं ना मास वास कुछ नहीं है हाइड्रोसेफेलस भी नहीं है तो नॉर्मल होगी तो तुम क्या देख सकते हो इसमें वेंट्रिकल साइज रिड्यूस हो जाते हैं और सब में इंक्रीज हो रहे थे वेंट्रिकल साइड हमने पढ़ा राइट और यहाँ पे रिड्यूस हो रहे हैं इलेवन परसेंट स्लिट वेंट्रिकल्स हैं यहाँ पे ठीक है स्लिट वेंट्रिकल्स होते हैं बिल्कुल बिल्कुल पतले वेंट्रिकल्स मतलब साइज बिल्कुल कम हो गई हो और एनलार्ज ऑप्टिक शीट्स और एम्पेटे सेला ये सिटी स्कैन में दिख जाता है कई बार कि एमपीटी सेला दिखा तुम्हें ठीक है और ट्रीटमेंट क्या है इसके तीन ट्रीटमेंट है मेन है मेडिसिन देगा तो एजिटोलोमाइड देना है तुम्हें ए कार्बोन कार्बोनिक एनहाइड्रेस इनिबिटर ये क्या करता है सी का प्रोडक्शन डिक्रीज करता है सेकेंड इज वेट लॉस बिकॉज ओबेसिटी इज लिंक टू दिस डिजीज एंड ऑप्टिक नर्फ एनिस्ट्रेशन एंड सी एस एफ शंटिंग लास्ट प्रोसीजर है अगर तेरी मेडिकल थेरेपी खराब हो जाती है अगर मतलब ओके नाउ ए चाइल्ड एक क्वेश्चन बनाया है इसका मैंने देर इज अ क्वेश्चन नाउ ए चाइल्ड बियरिंग वुमेन नाउ एस आई टोल्ड यू दैट प्रेगनेंट वुमेन आर एट मोर रिस्क एंड एज ऑफ थर्टी फाइव केम टू जी पी फॉर अ थ्रोबिंग हेडक and i told you that throbbing headache is a symptom of iih she also feels that she is hearing things that means tinnitus and sometimes she cannot see properly that means blurred visual obscuration so headache plus visual obscuration plus hearing loss plus uh, uh, age and obese women so these all are linking to pseudo tumor cerebri lp shows high icp more than 250 oh that's directly linking it to pseudo tumor cerebri mri is normal oh my god that's also sim that's also like related to pseudo tumor cerebri so what's the diagnosis now you know the answer i don't have to say it and that's conclude our session today and thank you for your support and just i will like to congratulate you all for doing your best in neuro and thank you so much please give a like and comment if you want thank you